How's it going everybody? So in this video I wanted to try to discuss some of the reasons why uh, science on red meat showing increased risk of uh, diseases uh, might not actually be very accurate in actual reality and actual practice. Okay, So this video is definitely not for militant vegans that already have their mind made up and believe that red meat is the cause of all evil. Um, maybe clinicians who previously thought red meat was like, you know, inherently negative for health, uh, maybe this would be a good video for them. This is more for open-minded individuals who maybe have not been following the evidence as long as I have, or just don't understand how to interpret the scientific literature surrounding red meat intake and, and um, you know, some of these studies in general. So uh, let's kind of dive right in, okay? So um, let's talk about some of the strongest evidence um, that red meat is actually not harmful, harmful to our health, okay? So first of all, um, the majority of the evidence that people cite claiming red meat is unhealthy is large population studies done on people over a long period of time. Uh, for example, cohort studies where they follow, you know, 100,000 or more people uh, over the course of decades, okay? And it's a questionnaire study generally where um, at the beginning of the study, they will ask uh, participants how much red meat do you eat on average? So these people have to think back and try to remember how much red meat did I eat? Um, last week and the day before, you know, most people can't really remember that very accurately and studies actually show questionnaire studies people generally lie and under-report things that they feel guilty about. Um, but let's just assume that these people are, you know, accurately gauging how much red meat they eat, right? So they, you know, um, so they recall how much red meat they, they generally eat and then, um, you know, how much fruits and vegetables they eat you know, and they just uh, jot down all the food that they eat in the total amounts on a regular basis on this questionnaire. And then they also write down, you know, what diseases they have. Do they have cancer? Do they have kidney disease? Do they have heart disease? Et cetera, et cetera. And then how much exercise they do. So on these questionnaires, they just write down how much meat they eat, how much disease they have, and then um, how much exercise they do, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that's the beginning of the study on hundreds of thousands of people. Then what happens is um, after a couple of years, sometimes a couple of decades, they will set, the, the researchers will send these people uh, questionnaires again and ask them the same questions. How much red meat do you eat? How much disease do you have, etc. Sometimes, uh, studies will actually measure blood levels, blood markers of disease at baseline, and then they'll measure it again at the end of the study. Um, but generally, you know, these large cohort studies are done using questionnaires rather than blood markers. So then at the end of the study, they look at, well, okay, so we have the people who eat the most red meat and how much disease they have and then they have the people who eat the, the least red meat and how much disease they have, right? And they try to correlate the people who eat the most red meat in the study with their rates of disease and they compare that to the people who eat the least amount of red meat and how much disease they have. And so generally what they find is the more red meat uh, people eat in America. I'll get to that. Um, the more disease they have. Now, this is not always the case, as I'm going to explain here in a bit. Um, this is a very inaccurate picture of, of uh, red meat intake in general. But the studies that show increased rates of risk of cancer, increased risk of heart disease, first of all, okay, first of all, statistical significance, okay, so when you look at the significance of the evidence, they'll say 30% increased risk, okay? Generally, this is relative risk, okay? So this is like um, the, the risk compared to the other, the other groups compared in the studies. 
um, and this is uh, statistical. But clinical significance, actually, abs so um, uh, relative risk is within the study design. Absolute risk is within the actual population. Relative risk on 100,000 like, large groups of people is very, very insignificant when we look at the real world. What we need to look at is absolute risk. Generally, um, relative, uh, if we have 30% relative risk on 100,000 people or more in a large population study like that, uh, that is actually extremely insignificant uh, in actual practical life. So, um, for a deeper discussion on that, you should probably look at, you should probably uh, look it up yourself, look up um, absolute risk versus relative risk. Uh, one of my clients uh, is actually a professor of data analysis, and she actually is on a peer review group for studies like this, and she conducts these uh, meta-analysis and things like this, um, and does the statistics of studies like this. And we always talk about, um, you know, how little significance uh, you know, the, the, these findings actually have. Um, and it comes down to statistical significance versus clinical significance and relative risk versus absolute risk. And that's something we have to look at first. But the main problem with these studies is usually if you look in at the average uh, American, the, pe the, the average American who eats the most red meat generally are eating that in the form of hamburgers with french fries and sodas. Um, they're not eating a steak with broccoli, red wine and green tea on the side, okay? Americans generally don't consume steak like on a regular basis in the form of a healthy meal without added sugars, uh, refined oils, and refined carbohydrates. So, the highest red meat group generally reflects non-compliers. This is called unhealthy user bias, and you should look up unhealthy user bias as well. This is why, you know, the average population has so much trouble sifting through health information, is because you have to actually understand um, how, you know, study design, you have to understand the, uh, these different um, methods of analysis, and, and how to interpret research. Um, but unhealthy user bias is basically these people who eat the least red meat, or sorry, the, the most red meat in these studies that have the greatest risk of cancer and things, they are non-compliers, they are people who live a generally unhealthy lifestyle because in America red meat is seen as unhealthy. Um, and so if people actually cared about their health and they were the types of people that um, you know exercise more, they stayed away from sugar, stayed away from refined carbohydrates and things like that, they would probably not be eating red meat. Although these days things are changing, right? And I'm about to discuss some of the studies that actually uh, show this to be most likely true. Um, but unhealthy user bias is a main explanation as to why some studies show um, red meat eaters in America have greater risk of disease. These people are generally obese. I mean, some like 75% of the population now or more is, is obese, you know, <laughs> pretty much any of these coral, these are correlation studies in America. Um, very hard to actually extrapolate to practical um, significance with, in regards to single factors being studied like red meat intake or even sugar. Um, because everyone's obese, so it's like you'll find increased risk of disease in, with any intervention it, that doesn't include eating fruits and vegetables. So this is also why we see um, the more fruits and vegetables a population eats, the healthier they become. Uh, because when you're studying uh, free-living people who are eating fruits and vegetables because they want to, you're going to see if someone's eating, uh, you know, 12 cups of fruits and vegetables a day, that's a lot of money they're spending on fruits and vegetables. Uh, unhealthy people do not spend $10 a day on fruits and vegetables uh, to reach that 12 cups of fruits and vegetable intake. 
generally vegans, vegetarians, and um, people who eat a high amount of fruits and vegetables in these studies, these are healthy people who are eating these fruits and vegetables as part of a healthy lifestyle because they want to be healthy. They're avoiding red meat, not because red meat is necessarily factually unhealthy, but because they hear it's unhealthy. And so it is a matter of people who are eating a uh, who are living a healthy lifestyle and avoiding unhealthy foods versus people who are living an unhealthy lifestyle and don't give a shit about their health. So higher rates of disease from higher red meat intake is reflecting people don't give a shit about their health. Unhealthy user bias, please research it. Now, here is why I'm so confident about this. So we actually have studies on um, people who eat red meat as part of a healthy lifestyle. Actually, let's not even get to that first. First, only in America do we have this, core, this heavy correlation between higher red meat intake and higher risk of disease. So in studies done on Asia, um, we actually have studies where that show people who eat the most red meat actually have better health outcomes and least risk of disease. In Asia, Red meat is seen as um, a health food, and it's seen as a, a luxury. It's seen as a food of status, okay? So people in, in Asia who eat the most red meat and these, it have these same, co these same cohort studies, these same population studies. In Asia, we see the opposite effect. We see less risk of disease with people who eat more red meat. Again, statistical significance compared to clinical significance. None of these studies are clinically significant, whether it's the American studies showing red meat leads to greater risk of disease, or the studies in Asia showing more red meat leads to better health outcomes. Either way, these findings are not significant. It's very hard to find significant um, you know, statistical or clinical significance, practical significance. It's very hard to find studies that show you know, significant impacts on absolute risk in, in regards to the, these, because the study design is on, has too large of, of a population, generally speaking, unless it's something like cigarette smoking, which we see a definite uh, increased risk. Um, but the studies on red meat don't show the same level of significant findings as cigarette smoke or alcohol consumption, for example. That's why there's so much debate around it. So, in Asia, we don't see the same thing. We see uh, the opposite. We see uh, decreased risk of disease with more red meat intake. And in Asia, generally, you know, there's a lot of poverty involved. Um, and just as a side note, the China study <laughs> is, uh, I'll have to make a separate video on that, but there is a reason why it is the way it is. Um, so one more thing is Hong Kong this is not the best example, but Hong Kong has one of the greatest um, life expectancies in the world, and they have for the last like decade. And they also eat the, the highest uh, red meat in the world, highest intake of red meat. They have like 1.5 pounds of red meat per capita in Hong Kong. So, um, you know, the other thing is, about a hundred years ago, people in Hong Kong were not eating that much red meat. And so the longevity they're experiencing now is probably more so the result of whatever diet they're eating 50 to a hundred years ago, rather than what they're eating right now. But the point is, if red meat was really as bad as some of these vegan propagandists and the you know cholesterol drug companies claim, then um, Hong Kong, probably wouldn't have as great of longevity as they do eating this much red meat. Let me also point to the fact that Japan has the greatest uh, intake of eggs in the world. I did a video on that before and they have some of the greatest longevity in the world. And also fish intake. I mentioned that before. I forgot if it was China, Okinawa, or Japan. But they also have the greatest fish intake in the world, uh, one of them, and the greatest longevity. I did a video on that previously. Maybe I'll link it down in the description. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's not as clear cut as red meat is bad or animal foods is bad or even cholesterol is bad.
because eggs and fish have high cholesterol. In fact, more cholesterol than red meat is depending on the cut and everything and the leanness. So, you know, you really cannot just like li read an article that says red meat is bad and it causes more cancer or some stupid like kidney disease. Like kidney disease that's been debunked over and over again by the evidence-based nutrition community. You know, even these people who believe cholesterol and uh, saturated fat leads to heart disease or whatever, saturated fat leads to higher LDL levels, and the evidence-based nutrition community, they also acknowledge the fact that greater protein intake does not lead to kidney problems unless you have previous kidney issue. So this idea that uric acid and purines lead to gout has been mostly debunked by the carnivore community. You see people who are eating nothing but red meat uh, or even paleo diets who used to have gout and they also had diabetes or they are overweight, they reverse gout on these mostly red meat diets simply by severely limiting their intake of uh, sugar and or carbohydrates. This does not mean that carbs are unhealthy or carbs are bad. This just means that there seems to be a different issue with uric acid that is not relating to red meat intake. Um, and uric acid and gout is, and purines and gout, that's the m more realistic concern rather than like kidney issues. So kidney issues has more to do with um, uric acid and increased acidity in the urine because if the kidney has to filter out the acidity, produces a byproduct of protein metabolism in order to keep the blood pH at a neutral level. So the only th you know actual worry about pH balance in the body from acidic foods has to do with um, the kidneys and, and filtering out urine and filtering out acidic byproducts. But the thing is, um, the kidneys do a very good job of filtering out uh, uric acid and, and ammonia and all these other uh, byproducts of protein metabolism, which by the way is not specific to red meat. Okay, uric acid, purines, and things like that. It, it's protein metabolism in general that uh, people often speculate is bad for the kidneys, okay? Um, same thing like creatine, right? You'll see increased creat creatinine levels um, with creatine ingestion. But meta-analysis, randomized control trials, um, there are a lot of studies now, there's a lot of evidence showing that um, unless you have a kidney issue, there are no clinically significant risks involved in higher protein intakes um, on, on the kidney issues unless you have a kidney, uh, kidney disease. So most people watching this channel already know this, but there's some people who are just like, oh, freak, they're like, oh, hypochondriacs because they're overloading themselves with information from sources without actually like reading the evidence, which provided it's very, very challenging to understand scientific evidence, I understand. But yeah, like it, it's pretty much a given now, unless you're already on dialysis or had heart failure or kidney issues, you should not, or maybe, you know, in stage type two di diabetes where you have kidney issues. You don't have kidney issues, you, should, you don't need to be worrying about like protein intake and dialysis and, and, or kidney issues. And again, it is not red meat intake that is the worry for ki the kidneys. It is overall protein intake in general. Um, and maybe more purines involved in animal flesh in general, possibly, but we don't see kidney problems in people eating more red meat. And remember, we're, bodybuilders are a extreme case. They're on anabolic steroids, they're taking diuretic medications. That's why they see the problems they do, okay? But healthy people who aren't on a bunch of drugs and supplements and crap don't see this problem. Uh, let's see. So now let's talk about, there's a UK shoppers study, and then there is a, a study, I believe it was done by Kevin Hall. I don't remember, but I posted both of these studies on my Instagram page uh, and made a comprehensive post about it. The UK shopper study, they took um, people who buy red meat at, at health food stores as a part, uh, with, with also fruits and vegetables as a part of a healthy diet. 
okay? They're not buying a bunch of junk and refined foods like the high red meat intake people in these other studies we mentioned at the beginning of the video. And they compare them to the vegetarian and or vegan people at the health food store. I believe it was a UK shopper study. Um, and they found people who eat high intakes of red meat as a part of a healthy diet in these studies done at a health food store, they don't have the same risk of disease that the high red meat intake people do in these American observational studies, okay, the population studies in America. Okay, they see the same thing that you see in these Asian countries, okay, either no risk of, no increased risk of disease from red meat intake or, um, you know, improved health outcomes compared to the average population. So one more thing, I believe there's a study from Kevin Hall. I have it on my Instagram page. If you're really interested, let me know and I'll try to link it to you somehow. Send me a DM on Instagram at Coach Wolfgang VL. Um, they did a study where, uh, with red meat eaters versus plant-based eaters and um, they equated fruit and vegetable intake and fiber intake in the red meat eaters. And what they found is uh, no increased risk of disease in these populations of people who eat high amounts of red meat along with fruits, vegetable, fruits and vegetables. And of course, the study authors claim it's because they're getting the polyphenols and the plant foods that protect them from the negative effects of the red meat. But I think that's bias. I think it's because it's not the red meat that's bad and causes disease. And I don't think these vegetables are magic and protecting the body. I think it's that whole foods don't kill you. Whole foods give you nutrients without negative side effects. And the main problem here is not whether red meat is unhealthy or not, or whether more plants is healthy or not. I think the problem is, are you eating, are you eating refined carbohydrates? Do you have diabetes? Um, are you eating these high omega-6 vegetable oils? Um, are you eating trans fats? Because those are the majority of the calories the average American eats. And the higher the red meat intake in the, in the American population, the higher the, 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 the probability that these people are following a standard American diet. That is key, okay? Overall, from what I can see, without concluding that red meat is magic or red meat is bad or red, red meat is good, and without concluding that fruit and vegetable is magic or good or bad, it seems like the more fruits and vegetables someone eats, the healthier lifestyle they're probably following and the more um, they're avoiding negative foods. That's why we see people who eat the most red meat and high intakes of fruits and vegetables have less uh, risk of disease it's not because the, the fruits and vegetables are protecting them from the red meat. It's because they care about their fucking health. Healthy user bias. They're healthy people. They're avoiding unhealthy foods. They're eat, living a healthy lifestyle. They happen to eat red meat and high vegetable intake. But they're avoiding the sugar and the sedentary lifestyle that these people in the other studies that show more cancer risk uh, with more red meat. They're all eating like the standard American diet. Okay, same thing with higher fruit, any, any freaking study that shows people are eating more fruits and vegetables are going to show less um, risk of disease because these people are probably not wasting their money on bonbons, candy, sodas, french fries, beer, alcohol, and the things that are actually killing people. So, in conclusion... Avoid the crap that's killing people. Avoid the sugar. Avoid the refined carbohydrates. Avoid the, the snack cakes and the sweet desserts and the bullshit. Okay? Avoid, avoid the alcohol, or at least limit it as much as possible. Definitely avoid smoking. Stop obsessing over freaking minutia that doesn't matter. Okay? Exercise on a regular basis. Get to a healthy waist circumference and body fat percentage. BMI is bullshit. Get your body fat percentage down. Increase your lean mass, okay? Um, stop smoking, okay? Avoid sugar. Avoid alcohol. Avoid processed foods. Eat more fruits and vegetables because there's a slightly significant, you know, benefit maybe. Um, avoid red meat if you want, but focus on the shit that actually matters, okay? 
And I'll make another video on this in the future. But yeah, healthy user bias. You don't see the same problems in people who eat more fruits and vegetables along with the red meat. Um, you know, <laughs> correlation does not equal causation. And if you're just like reading a bunch of freaking articles, of course you're gonna hear a bunch of opinions from even people with degrees that claim red meat's unhealthy. It's because they've been told that all their life. And they're taught that in medical school if they don't have a professor is up to date on the research. But you ask any evidence-based nutrition person who's actually up to date on the research who's not vegan, and they'll generally say red meat's fine. They might tell you to only eat lean cuts of red meat because they think saturated fat increases LDL, and they think LDL is a causal risk factor for heart disease, which I don't think it is. But still, they'll say it's not red meat necessarily, unless you're on dialysis or some shit. Um, you know, like the the increased risk of disease we see in these population studies is not even that significant. Even the ones where the World Health Organization classified red meat as like a class two carcinogen, the absolute risk of dying from any of these diseases is so insignificant in the real living world um, from absolute risk, it's not clinically significant at all. If you actually have a PhD in data analysis, you'll be able to understand that. But if you want to avoid red meat and you're still eating sugar, you're still eating processed foods, you're still drinking alcohol, then you're not going to fucking save any amount of your health by avoiding red meat, okay? Especially if you're overweight. Um, so anyway, I got things I got to do, but let's uh, post that one up. So leave your question comments down below. If you need any more clarifications, if you want references, let me know and I'll send them to you. And I'll talk to you all next time.